Welcome everybody to uh, my presentation on uh, Hansen's disease. Um, this is directed by myself and viewer discretion is advised as there might be some scary images, there might not. Um, so we will get right into the presentation. If you guys have any other questions afterward, you can always email me. That's A-M-A-A-L at udallas.edu. But yeah, let's get underway. All right, so Hansen's disease. Um, I thought he was presenting on leprosy. Yeah, so when I first looked up um, leprosy for this presentation, it kept coming up as Hansen's disease. And so, well, why is that? So it's also known as Hansen's disease because it is named after the scientist who discovered it. Um, and, well, this scientist was a Norwegian scientist. Uh, his name was Gerard Heinrich Amauer Hansen. Uh, forgive me, all you Norwegian folk, for butchering your uh, colleague here. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, he discovered it in 1873 using a microscope, and he discovered that um, there was a certain germ causing this disease. And so now this was kind of a game changer for everyone in the medical field because now it was tangible evidence that there was a uh, germ causing this disease and not some curse or um, some hereditary aspect uh, to the disease itself. So yeah, before this uh, discovery was made, there's a lot of speculation, a lot of uncertainty about what exactly causes this. So good to know. Yeah, so Hansen's disease, the classification, we have, uh, well, the disease itself, the causative agent is Mycobacterium leprae. And there are three different uh, subgroups of this disease. So uh, each have different signs and symptoms. You got uh, Pausibacillary tuber tuberculoid Hansen disease. You got Multibacillary uh, lepro lepromatous disease, Hansen's disease, and then borderline or dimorphous Hansen's disease. Um, so I wanna talk about each of those. Uh, the first one is characterized by one or few hypopigmented or hyperpigmented skin uh, macules. And these exhibit, uh, you know, loss of sensation or due to infection or the peripheral nerves um, supplying the region. So this disease affects not only the skin, but the nervous system as well, which can be very scary if left untreated. Um, we'll go into that later. Then the second one, multibacillary lep lepromatous. Hansen's disease, we got, uh, well, you have generalized or diffuse involvement of the skin, thickening of the nerves under uh, microscopic examination. So you see these nerves thickening up because of this disease. Um, and it could potentially involve the bone, the eyes, testes, and nose as well. So this is the second form. And then you have the third, which is borderline or dimorphous Hansen's disease, which is the most common out of the three. Um, it has immediate severity compared to the other two. And the, the skin lesions are, uh, they're kind of like the tuberculosis type, but they're more numerous and they're found all over the body. And then the peripheral nerves are also affected as well. And so you have ensuing uh, weakness and anesthesia in those areas. So um, very scary stuff because um, if you develop, you know, numbness or lack of feeling in areas where this disease has been affected, then you can't feel things. So let's say you get burned in that area. Well, you didn't know you get burned because your nerves are fried, they're not working. So it can be very dangerous. Hansen's disease, what makes this mycobacterium so special? So compared to a lot of diseases out, uh, out there, well, it is a very uh, poor disease acting on its own. So um, mycobacterium leprae is an acid, fat, acid fast rod-shaped bacillus. Um, and this organism multiplies itself uh, very slowly, once every 13 days, um, so about two weeks. Um, so it's a very slow growth. And um, we got the obligate intracellular pathogens. Uh, yeah, these things just lack all the genes that are needed for independent survival, so survival outside of the host. So it makes it very difficult to study this uh, disease because it, can, it cannot be grown in normal um, bacteriologic media. So we could not really study this in lab unless we had some armadillos. And it's known that armadillos can contract leprosy and spread it as well. 
Um, so there are they are the number one uh, animal used in studying uh, leprosy, and uh, for that reason, they are used quite frequently to uh, be experimented on. So uh, we have a picture of an armadillo there saying Merry Christmas. Um, but yeah, very concerning um, for me to know that armadillos can carry this thing around because there are several armadillos on the Irving campus and walking to cross country practice every day. In the morning, you see those guys running around uh, the woods and whatnot. Um, so very, very careful. If you ever thought to touch an armadillo, definitely don't do that. All right. We got uh, Hansen's disease. We got modes of transmission, question mark. Um, well, according to CDC's website, it's not really known how exactly Hansen's disease spreads between people, um, which is a very concerning thought. Um, yeah, we don't know in science, in the scientific community, how this thing is exactly or, uh, transmitted. We do know, well, we don't know, but we have a consensus of uh, scientists that um, the transmission could occur when, infected in, when the infected individual coughs or sneezes and those droplets from the cough or sneeze are breathed in by a healthy person. So um, the CDC explains that prolonged untreated leprosy over many months is needed for someone to catch uh, the disease. So um, plenty of, uh, I guess, cons consolation there because you cannot contract a disease by a basic handshake or um, high five or things like that. You need to be exposed to someone for a long period of time in order for this thing um, to get you. So um, still coughs and sneezes, spread diseases. So um, yeah, trap those germs in your uh, tissues, everyone. All right, so now we got um, the infection process, signs and symptoms. So on average, we, got, we know that the incubation period of the disease is about five years. So the WHO explains that symptoms can occur within one year, but it can also take up to uh, 20 years. So long time. Um, the disease affects the skin, peripheral nerves, mucosa of the upper respiratory tract, and the eyes. So you got the nose, mouth, lips, um, things like that. And then once uh, this occurs, uh, you got growth nodules on the skin, ulcers on the feet, swelling, lumps, earlobe swelling as well. Um, and then this, uh, this disease also damages the nervous system. So you have paralysis of the hands and feet, um, numbness of affected areas of the skin, enlarged nerves, eye problems that may lead to blindness. So um, very, very creepy stuff. Um, you definitely don't want to catch this thing. Uh, Hansen's disease, possible eradication. So uh, the WHO uh, has put forth this plan back in 2016 um, in which they wanted to create this for you plan to uh, create a leprosy free world, so eradication. Um, and so this strategy is organized around three pillars. So the first pillar is uh, strengthening uh, government ownership and coordination and partnership. So a couple areas that that covers um, ensuring political commitment and resources, resources for leprosy, uh, facilitating conducting basic and operational research in all aspects uh, of leprosy and to maximize the evidence base uh, to inform policy strategies and activities. Uh, also strengthening surveillance and health information, um, providing systems for program monitoring and uh, evaluation. So, just a couple areas there. And then the next pillar is to stop leprosy and its complications. So uh, strengthening patient and community awareness of leprosy, promoting early access detection through active case finding. You want to be able to find out who has this very early on because if this is left untreated, the, the, the results can be lifelong. So um, luckily there's a cure, we'll talk about that in a second, but you want to catch uh, um, having had since disease early. And then uh, also ensuring prompt start of and adherence to treatment. So yeah, we want to identify this quickly and then also um, move towards treatment as soon as possible. And then the third pillar is to stop discrimination and promote inclusion. So promoting societal inclusion by addressing all forms of discrimination and stigma against leprosy. So people um, who have this disease and who carry it around, there's a certain 
sense of, okay, uh, exclusion from them. And so later on, we'll talk about some uh, theological aspects of this disease. And so a lot of that has to do um, with, okay, these people are clearly sick. You know, they look sick. They have all these swelling and discolored skin. So let's just prevent them from working at my business or shopping um, at my business, why not? So I think that has a lot to do with that. Um, you also want to be empowering persons infected by leprosy and strengthening your capacity to participate actively in leprosy services. So um, also involving communities and actions for improvement of leprosy services. So the WHO wants to tackle all aspects of the disease, not just the disease itself, but the effects it creates on society. So this is disease and society after all. Um, Hansen's disease, international statistics, all we got here. Um, the one of note I want to mention is the global statistic, about 200,000 cases of leprosy are diagnosed annually. And then uh, in the U.S., about 150 to 250 cases diagnosed annually. Um, but the main hotspots are Brazil, and then you have also have India and Indonesia. So those are the three countries with the largest cases um, most of the time. And then we got uh, Hansen's disease. Should I be afraid or should we be afraid? Well, there is treatment for Hansen's disease. It involves multi-drug therapy, so MDD, MDT. Uh, and these drugs are Dapsone uh, with Rifampicin and Clofosamine. Sorry, I butchered that really hard. Uh, but yeah, a combination of these things um, helps to tackle the disease. Um, and this treatment is lasts for about two years. And then usually if, if you can pursue through that um, treatment, then you were, you are able to uh, be cured. And also 95% of individuals have community, have immunity in, of the disease. So that's a good thing. Um, from a theology major's perspective, leprosy is commonly mentioned in Holy Scripture. Um, the example I brought up was uh, Luke 17, 11 through 19. So Jesus is approached by 10 lepers and heals all 10 of them, but only one of them returns and uh, says, thank you. Um, the church fathers that will interpret this passage to mean that, well, you know, leprosy is a sign of being sick. It's a sign of sin and sin is a spiritual ailment manifested in a physical ailment, which is leprosy. And so uh, the one leper who returns to Jesus saying, thank you. He's the only one who realizes that, okay, Christ is bringing the kingdom of God. So he's the only one who recognizes what really happened versus the other nine who did not. Um, so interesting stuff. And then you also got um, uh, more examples in the Catholic world surrounding leprosy. We have St. Damien of Molokai. Um, I really want his hat, really cool hat there. Um, he was one of the uh, most noble Catholic individuals to actually go to the um, colonies in Hawaii where leprosy was a huge, huge deal. He helped improve the uh, infrastructure there by providing better food and uh, water services and facilities. He eventually contracted this himself and he actually died of leprosy. Um, so once he went to Hawaii, he spent 16 there, years living there. And with the amount of incubation time, he might have gotten it day one he was there. He might have gotten it um, in the last year he was there. So we don't know. But he did die of leprosy. Uh, he died in 1889. So this was before the uh, multi-drug therapy was available. Um, and he refused to leave the island where he could receive possible treatment. Um, so it really goes to show how um, uh, much compassion some of the saints have for uh, the, those who are marginalized in society. And so he is a great example of how we can extend our hand to those suffering with disease and um, providing for them. Um, as a part of the human family. So yeah, this is my presentation. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys learned a little bit about Hansen's disease. As always, you can reach me on my email for questions.